Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. In this video, we're going to look at how you would add a OSDP reader to the AXIS um, network controller. I'm going to be using the um, HID signal reader. I'm going to be using the AXIS manager and set this up as an OSDP reader. And I'll be using that along with the um, AXIS single door controller. Okay, let's get started. Installers rely on ADI. The ADI projects and technical teams offer a pre-configuration service. Any project size from a single device or to a complex system. Any IP device can be configured from our central hub using our technical and projects teams. Having your device pre-configured will save engineers time on site. We can set your IP address, the gateways, and in addition, we'll make sure your device has the latest firmware on board. Simply get in touch with your ADI sales contact or email the projects team. Okay, let's begin. The, um, the A1001, the, the AXIS network controller, is that. It's a network controller. It sits on your local area network or your own private network, however you like. It's a PoE powered device, so it can be locally powered. Um, configuration is done through the web browser. So you have to find out on your network, first of all. Easiest way is to go to the AXIS website, axis.com, and in the search facility there, search for the IP utility tool. So there, I've already downloaded it. If we just double click, yep. Takes us to the scanner. I'm not gonna do anything. It will scan by itself and find any AXIS device on the network. And there we go. And it's found this device, the A1001, which we're gonna be working on today. Shows you the IP address and the serial number, the MAC address. So if we double click on that, it takes us to my preferred browser, logs us in. If, if you come to a login screen, the default login and password is root and pass. Um, and then you can change that later, later on in setup. So now we're logged in. Let's go to setup. Let's go to hardware configuration. Let's start new hardware configuration. The network controller. So what's the name of the controller? We'll just call it uh, an ACU. We're not connecting any um, USB, uh, sorry, OSDP for RS-485 devices yet. So we'll leave that as is. Number of doors connected, it is a two door controller. You can allow door one uh, or two door control. We'll just leave it as a one door and we'll call it door one. Uh, next, is it monitored? So this is an interesting one. If you want, if you're not going to be using the monitored um, magnet or monitored lock release, monitored locking device, and if you're not fitting the door contact on there, what you can do is say, if, the, if it's an open circuit, the door's open. If it's an open circuit, the door's closed. It reduces some functionality. It reduces the security somewhat as well. But by doing that, you save yourself a lot of false alarms and you don't have to put links in the controller because you're saying if it's an open circuit, then the door's open. So in this instance, I've just got a, a bare controller with nothing connected and I'm not connecting any locks at the moment. So I'll leave it as that. Um, so, and this is what I'm saying here about reducing security. The next tab, cancel access um, once the door is opened. If the controller knows the door's been opened through an access granted routine, and then the door shuts, it doesn't need to stay open anymore. It locks it instantly. And that's added security, it stops tailgating as such. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting feature and something you should use really. Um, if you were to enable it, it what is it, the relock time and so on. Um, so access time is seven seconds. That's how long the door stays open for. Later on, in, we'll show you how to have a long access time. And if that's uh, enabled, it's 30, seven, 30 seconds. Long time, that's how long you leave the door open. So again, if you're holding the door open and saying, come on, you're letting lots of people in, it'll, it will know. And if you got linked up to the video manager, you can actually see what time that happened. So it's an interesting, um, interesting feature to use.
further on let's have a look at the the lock output as i say it's poe and it does supply power if you like is it 12 volt output fail safe we know lock 2 isn't used lock monitor we're not using that we've already discussed that supervised inputs rather than the dry contact exit button they having some resistive value across there again i'm not using that feature yet so that's that next entrance reader what type of reader is it so that's the point of this video instead of connecting a, a Wigand reader we're going to connect a, an osdp reader um, osdp is a much more secure protocol it carries multiple data and it's a bit like RS-485, it is RS-485 in, in a different term. Um, so it carries a lot of data between the reader and the controller, a higher encryption rate. So as well as sending card data, it also sends buzzer data and LED data. So it's a lot more difficult for potential intruders to sniff the data out, whereas you can on Wigand, because on Wigand, you've got two wires just doing one job. So all in all, OSDP is a lot more secure transmission method. So yeah, OSDP, um, exit read the exit REX, the exit button, have we got one? No. Um, exit reader, no, and there's no exit button on the inside. Finish that. So that's applying the settings to the controller. Now that's transmitting the data through. And it's interesting, you don't really get to see the controller while you're setting this up, but you can see the lights on the controller, they behave differently. It's showing that it's received data. And now we've successfully completed our configuration. And we can start adding devices. All we're going to do in this instance is just add a, a reader. So what we can do is we can go to the pin chart. And we can see the terminals that we need to uh, the reader on. So um, door one, reader one. The connections at the top here would be RX and B minus. The reader connection is RX A plus. Power for the reader. Um, ground is this one here. Positive is this, this one here. How do you know on the signal reader? How do you know? which is which it should be fairly obvious to most people um positive is red negative is black but how do we know about these terminals here most people who've ever installed um, a Wigand reader will know it's green and white but which order is it uh, if you have a look at the signal manual it'll tell you actually um green being data b and uh, white being data a so let's we'll connect these terminals up now we haven't set the signal reader up yet we haven't given any of its um parameters the terminal blocks you pull out the normal cinch terminal terminal blocks you can just pull them out so connect it pull the terminals on connect your wires up but only reconnect the power at this point i wouldn't connect the um the gray block here i would only connect the power block just to power the reader up because as you go through the signal reader set up in the, the manager, which I'll show you in a moment, um, you need to tell it it's an OSDP reader. And that involves pulling the power. And if, you, if you're on a tight cable connection, you might pull the, um, the unneeded wires out. So it's just a bit of maintenance, really. Okay, we'll head over to the, um, the HID reader management uh, now and um, set the reader up. Okay, so we've launched the HID Manager app. We're going to log in, and the the app will download your your assets, your your um, database from their cloud. So make sure you got a good connection. We're on the landing page at the top there. We can scan for readers, and it's found our reader, the HID reader. Click on that, and then we can go to inspect, and we can inspect what um, what reader we've got. It will go through now, it will communi communicate on BLE, it will download all the um, templates, uh, settings and what have you. You can have a scroll through and see how the reader set up. So fortunately in our case, um, we can see at the bottom here, um, 
OSDP is enabled on this reader, which is good. So what we can do now is just make sure that it's communicating that. So we will we'll go to um, detailed communications. And this is what I was saying before about power cycling. Now you've got to pull the power from the reader. So it's much easier just to pull the terminal block and remove the, the power than it is to switch the um, power on off to the controller. So I'll do a quick power cycle and um, let it download its load. Let it confirm that you are who you say you are. I've just done that. It's reading my um, templates, the database in the reader. And it's going to come back and tell us um, how the reader is programmed. Let's um, click on the output format. You can see here that it is a weakened reader, so let's turn that off and it enables OSDP. So now we've cha made that change, we need to add to a template and then we need to save as a template. Well, this is the template in the in the cloud. So let's give it a title, OSDP. And the category would be ADR. This is all part of your, part of your setup of the app. You give your business a name, ADI. So we've got the template. Now we need to apply the template to the reader. So apply the selected items. And now on BLE, Bluetooth, it will send that information through to the reader. Once it's um, sent through and confirmed, it will let you know that it's confirmed. Once that's done, we can then connect the reader to the um, terminal block in the controller and then get on with programming in the Axis and control itself in the web browser. Shouldn't take too long. It's done about 30 seconds or so because it's not a particularly large um, folder. Previously, I've um, I set this up as um, a weekend reader, but changing it like this is, is good practice because you should do it anyway just to make sure everything's working correctly. Return to the home page and, and we're done in this app now, so we can close this and then go back to the um, Axis controller. Back to the Axis controller now, and let's have a look at Axis management. So the um, Axis management is much like any Axis control system. You need to add users, um, groups, door groups, and time zones. So step one, let's add a user. First name would be AD or ADI and global. And we need to add a credential, ADI global. Now I'm just going to present my token to the reader. He might be able to hear it buzz. And then what I can do is retrieve that card number, token number. There it is, it's already retrieved it and also the serial number of the token, which isn't something that's normally visible. A valid from, we've already said the 1st of March, and valid until the 1st of March again. Change the year in advance, 1st of March, and save that. Next, um, we need to add a group. So we call it door group. You can say I've already done this before, door group. Valid from where is it for to discuss this? First of March until the first of March next year. Save that. And um, door one that's pre-configured and time zones, access schedules. We're going to give it um, always, all the time. You can give it specific time groups if you like, or you can create your own. But we'll just leave it as is. So in the door group there, you can see two, three pieces of information are missing. Group members, who's allowed in? So this is this group here. That's populated. Which door can this group get through? It's door one. And when can that person get through? Always. So that's, um, there's no missing data there now. Now, if we have a look at the door menu, is there any information missing? User readers, um, no identification types added. So let's um, add an identification type. Facility code only, card number only. We'll say card number only. Okay. 
Um, no schedules, so let's just reconfirm that always. Drag and drop. Let's go down. Exit reader. Well, we haven't got an exit reader, but if we want to, why not? We'll say it's card number only. Schedules. Are we restricting where people can come and go? Again, we're not using it in this instance, but we'll add it as always anyway. So there's no red, there's no warnings anywhere. So hopefully now, if I present my token, it should open the door. Let's have a look. Reader's gone green and we've got valid access. And there we go. A short term video there on how to connect the OSDP style reader to a, an access controller. As I say, I was using the, um, the HID signal reader which is a, I mean, it's a very good reader. It does weekend and clock and data. It supports multiple formats. I was using a generic MyFair card on this particular reader. But of course you can use high security cards like a CS enabled card to give you that extra encryption. You can use um, Deskfire cards, EV1, EV2, and now EV3 as well to give you maximum encryption. And you can also use um, low security cards. I was um, in the previous video when I was testing this reader on other devices, I found out, for instance, it, the reader will read a clock and data token, a HID clock and data token, and send that as uh, Wigan data. So it's good for taking over legacy systems as well. It will support multiple formats. It's a very um, versatile reader. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.